Hello, it's Debbie Gilbert here from the Business Awards Show, and I'm also the founder of the Best Business Women Awards. And today I am joined by Fiona De Silva Adams, who is the owner of Revolution Performing Arts, based in Swindon and also other areas, which she will fill us in in a moment. Um, and she's been running her business for the past 17 years. And what is so interesting about Fiona is she started her business 17 years ago as a mature student, having gone to drama school much later in life. And I think she's got an extra special story. So we're going to be talking about her journey and also a bit about what awards that she's won and why awards have been important to her and her school. So welcome, Fiona. Thank you, Debbie. Lovely to be here. Thank you. Oh, I'm really excited to talk to you about this. Um, because I think anyone who decides midlife to go back and do something different is very inspirational. So tell us what happened, because we were talking before the podcast started. Yeah. Both of us working in corporate in the 1980s, shoulder pads and perms. We Shout had them. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just decided to completely pivot because we can use the word pivot because that came from COVID. So you pivoted before pivoting was even a thing <laughs> what did you do and actually pivoting works quite well with the whole dance thing doesn't it so it does. tell us what happened to you oh my goodness so um I'd always been um a, a dancer if you like from like a little tiny little tot I'd always oh. been a dancer but bless my poor ballet teacher she you know trying to get me to stand in a certain way and to dance in a certain way I think she gave up I was I was that little ballerina who was <laughs> give me a ballet bar everybody else will look beautifully and elegant and I'll be hanging off it from my legs upside down <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I, arts has always been in my life um and then you know like like we said in sort of 1986 I was a corporate bard I worked for BT um and then I was British Telecom's youngest international trainer driving up and down the M4 yeah absolutely teaching um very, very experienced engineers, uh, management engineers um, of 30 years experience, how to manage their teams. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you can imagine how that yes. went down. Um, but it was, it was glorious. It was, it was amazing. Even my style of, of doing things in a different way, even back then was amazing. After that, with all of the BT changes, I took mm. contract redundancy and then set up a, a branch of legal and general in Swindon. Mm-hmm. And then um, created all of that from nothing. And that was amazing. And and then, bless, I had everything by the age of 21 mm. and to 23. I had my own house. I had everything that I could ever want it, ever would ever want in my life. And I was thoroughly miserable. Oh, wow. <laughs> so um, uh, corporate all the way. And mm. then I was still dancing. And then... Um, so you were dancing part-time? Were you going to classes? Yeah. Yeah. I was um, I was doing community dance classes mm -hmm. at Swindon Dance. Back then, it was called Thames Down Dance Studios by the amazing Marie McCluskey, pioneer of oh. British dance. Um, and, uh, yes, dancing all the way through. And then I was asked by um, uh, an organisation to come and create... Why they asked me this? I don't know. But uh, to come and create a dance piece for all these lovely people that had never danced before um, to raise money for the UN High Commission for Refugees. Oh, wow. OK. So, uh, so I I created this dance thinking I was some choreographer, not having a clue <laughs> what I was doing. And um, uh, bless, somebody came along and helped me. And we put on this beautiful performance in Bristol. And then from there, I thought, what what am I doing what am mm. I doing I want to dance I want to dance so at the age of 23 I auditioned at Swindon Dance to go and dance with um 16 year olds for two years so I was 23 they were 16. Wow <laughs> so that was a big change yeah a massive change so I was still very corporate not realizing mm. what I was getting into and they were like so cool so down with it giving me all the face of like what's she doing here and um, but yeah, I did it. I did it, mm. and I did two years there, and then I went on and trained at Middlesex University, uh, doing their performing arts degree. And so five, yeah, five years altogether, and then swore I'd never come back to Swindon, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the thought behind? So you graduated, and then what was your thought behind setting up your own business? 
Okay, so then, you know, as uh, with a lot of us in our lives, um, my children completely changed my life. Mm. So obviously, so um, uh, I, I came back to Swindon, I was became general manager of Six Sense Theatre Company, then now it's Prime Theatre. And as I was doing my <clears throat> drama training with them, uh, and teaching their young people, once I had my babies, there was nothing in Swindon then for little people um, uh, where they could really um, unleash their creativity. Mm. My son was four at the time, and then my baby girl was one year old, and I gave up my work and I said, right, let's go and do something. So I literally got an end roll piece of carpet, called it a magic flying carpet, got lots of little um, uh, dressing up clothes uh, on a rail, started in a little village hall down the road from me with four children. And um, we went off and we flew on a magic flying carpet. Oh, that's um, amazing. It was How glorious. amazing. So and you we... just literally like did a bit of local advertising, got a few yeah. people there. Yeah. And that's how Revolution Performing Arts was born. Yeah. And of course, this was all before social media. Mm. So yeah. it was actually leaflets around, word of mouth, but within... One year, I was doing from one class to 13 classes. Oh, my gosh. That is an amazing growth. Yeah. And then um, uh, now we have around uh, just regular class with regards to our regular classes, 400 children a week. And oh it's, um, it's That's amazing. Day. So it's what do you think day. makes you different? Because there are, let's just say, put it out there. There are a lot of performing arts classes now, aren't there? So what differentiates you, do you think? Um. OK, so... Um, a lot of people think that when they, they send a young person to one of our classes, they might think that they're going to come and we're going to stand in front of them and look very beautiful and show them exactly how they're going to dance or how they're going to sing or how they're going to act. Mm. But what we do is when a gorgeous young person comes into our class, we ask them what do they like to sing? What's their favourite song? Who oh, does wow. their favourite mm. film? What do they like to pretend being? Um, and we use that song or favourite films to help them sing their song or we create a dance to their favorite song so it's really it's completely child-led and it's really empowering and nurturing and giving young children a voice to make sure that they can be heard so um, it's not about us telling them it's about us uh, facilitating their creative journey oh I love that so were they divided up into different age groups uh, so we have um, some classes are uh, all sorts of different things. So we have some that comes we, while we're in their school. So we were the first performing arts company to offer after school clubs in Swindon. Yes. So that was amazing. Yeah. And that kind of age, four to 11. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have um, from age 10 to 14, they might want to start um, specialising in their genre. So they might want to just do acting or just do street dance. Um, and then we have another group, 11 to 18. Once they go to secondary school, uh, we can start doing things a bit more gritty that they really enjoy that helps them express themselves. So you've expanded without franchising. So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about how you've expanded your business and what you do. What's your model? Gosh, oh, that's a great question. Um, I have a model. Um, uh, you do. You have a model even if you don't know it. <laughs> Um, everything I do is really organic and I know that word is overused a bit but it really is it's like what I feel where I'm drawn to teach where if, uh, uh, if a, even if a parent contacts us and says there's nothing in my area we work with them to create something for their young people in their area so I say we're really privileged if you want something in your area we'll work together we'll create it if young people need us we will be there so um, it's been really really organic and word of mouth so parents will come to us and say, um, could you come to our school? Schools will contact us and say, can you come and be in our in our school? But yeah, we're because Swindon is quite central. All the little counties around us, we kind of spread our way out to there as well. So it's been great. So um, I think you're not just organic. You're actually quite creative and you're putting that creativity into your business. So what challenges have you come across over the last few years with your business? I mean, COVID must have been a challenge. Oh man, I will never forget. 23rd of March, 2020, mm. COVID was, oh man, well, wasn't it all for all, all of us to be fair? Yeah, it was. Um, we were writing emails on on how, how what we were going to do with our classes and we were having to change them every 10 minutes. Do you remember mm. speeches coming through on the radio and we had to keep, keep changing the email of what we were going to write and what we were going to deliver? But within 24 hours with 
absolutely no technical expertise of like online training we were on zoom within 24 hours and that was the wednesday and they were saying we were saying right we're going to be on zoom from tonight and our teachers are going to deliver online from tonight they're like no no but the schools are still open the schools are still open we were like we think they will be closed by friday we think yeah. they will be closed so we're just going to do it we're just going to go for it so yeah so covid was a massive thing but i'm really proud that I won a COVID grant from the from Arts Council from the Arts Council England, and um, so that I was able to pay my freelancers all the way through, all the way oh, through. Oh, that was good. Yeah, because that was a real. I mean, the performing arts industry, like hospitality, was hit so hard. You yeah, know, COVID absolutely. was terrible. And how long did it take you to recover from that? Did it bounce back as soon as the doors opened again, or did it take a while? To be fair, I think with COVID and then the cost of living crisis, yes. I think we're still recovering, to be honest. Yes. I mean, you know, we're doing quite well. Our numbers are really good, but it's it's tough. It's really tough. And um, yeah, we're, we're still um, being innovative with the way that we can do things. It, take, it takes a while to recover. But, you know, we changed things. We closed our actual office and we actually moved house. We, so we, we built an office in our garden to kind of reduce those kind of costs. So it's always just trying to be really careful with uh, where we spend our money, where we invest money. It's always about people for us. It's always about keeping getting the right people and keeping them. That's the toughest thing, I think. That's the toughest thing. It is. Client retention, especially because children can be, let's, let's put it this way, a bit fickle, can't they? They'll go, oh, I like to do that. And then you join that and then they don't stick it in. They go on to something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and it can be quite hard keeping them engaged. But how do you work to keep your kids engaged with what you're doing? Oh, gosh, well, we do lots of performances. Yes. We do about five performances a year, which is a that lot. That is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. So I'm really lucky. I've got um, an artistic director. She works. She creates everything for me. And we also recruited Georgia, who's our assistant producer, uh, who graduated last year. And that was glorious. So um, uh, we have lots of people that can help us work with the actual performances. But to keep them engaged, yeah, we have one big performance and then four little ones. Mm -hmm. So I count down, don't I? A big one and four little ones. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, basically the young people get to shine the way that mm -hmm. they want to shine, either in a smaller uh, performance space or in a big performance space. But that really keeps them engaged. And and communicating with young people so they feel listened to mm. a young person that it's rare it's rare you know poor young people they have to go to school sit down be quiet mm. listen you know be told and for us we're like no darling come tell us tell us tell us mm. what you, tell us what you want and we'll make it happen mm. that's a real privilege to nurture and empower young people like that it's a massive privilege massive. yeah it is a massive privilege and I think you know, they need that escapism away from the day-to-day -day routine of school. And I think it can provide them with so many other life skills, you know, the confidence aspect and being able to speak to a group of people. Do you agree with that? A hundred percent. And we, we actually sell often how, um, especially with our, you know, when, we, when people don't really know who we are, we talk about it being a life skill to be able to give the interview at university, to be able to um, actually ask questions in class. Mm. I shut it, I've got a great video on, on YouTube, on, on my YouTube channel and um, with a beautiful head teacher that we've been with since the beginning. And, and she said, she said to me in this interview that children who take risks learn more in class mm. so because we give them the opportunity to shine in a performance space we also do this in school so in the schools we'll do a whole school assembly and those little people will get up and they will sing their little song or dance their little dance in front of the whole school that's mm. i'd say even more frightening than stage because on a stage it's all black you can't see anybody mm. you can see all their faces mm. But the teachers um, are astounded by young people who get up and actually sing or dance or do whatever they want. And it affects them in, in class, you know, it increases their confidence and raises their status amongst their peers. So 100% life skills. 100%. Yeah, definitely. So I've got to ask, are you still dancing yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you not been tempted Kitchen. to start an adult dance class or an adult <laughs> performing arts group? in the kitchen but no one's looking no. oh. <laughs> uh, we do we do uh, yeah we did do um, an adult dance class for a while straight after covid and we have been asked to bring it back again 
Um, so you never know, I think, you know, especially as mums, we need to be able to like unleash mm. and, you know, be able to really um, get rid of the stress. You know, sometimes stress can be, you can feel like you're walking through mud with a mm. bomb on your shoulder, all the weight that we have to carry. But do you know what? It's lovely to put on your favourite piece of music and just let it all rip. Yeah, I think we should do that again. <laughs> and unleash our inner divas, Fiona. Uh, unleash our inner it. divas. Now, you and I met... Um, at the Female Enterprise Conference, I believe, didn't you? Yes, yes, we Which did. Which I was speaking about awards, and you were there, and and you know you were a very you were a very bubbly person, Fiona, and you definitely bring a lot of light into the room. And then we met at the Great British Awards again, did. where we were both winners, yay! Yes. <laughs> and you won an amazing award, which is Outstanding Contribution to Community. And I love that award. I think it is such a great title and it's so enriching to win an award where you feel like you've given back to your community so tell us a bit about that and what made you enter oh wow okay so um uh yeah it's really privileged really privileged to win that award and um yeah when my bless my little childhood when I was growing up was a little bit was a little bit troubled and um you know we really we struggled on on all all schools you know um financially everything uh and um uh, I was also, um, as a child, a victim of domestic abuse. Mm. So um, my escapism was, uh, maybe I'll show my age now, but um, my escapism was uh, on the back of the Beatles vinyl records. Mm. And there's all the lyrics. And I used to pretend with my pink National Health glasses. I used oh, to pretend, yeah, uh, no, I had pink National oh, Health glasses. <laughs> I knew we had something in common. <laughs> <laughs> Trying, trying not to look down at the lyrics as I was holding my hairbrush and I would sing oh, as though goodness. I was singing to thousands and mm. that proved um, an amazing escape for me and it brought me massive soothe so once I was really um revolution was really established I thought Do you know what um I know I know I can affect young people and how I can make them feel especially those affected by domestic abuse so what I did is um I work with uh, Swindon Women's Aid now called Swindon Domestic Abuse Support Service and I'm an ambassador for them and um, I work with them and I would go into the refuge and I would give free sessions to to uh, the children mm. and I'd have little ones come in with dark shadows under their eyes hair over their face not you know not wanting to engage really traumatized and within an hour and a half, I had a little pickle singing, let it go, with their hair back, face up, goosebumps. I tell you, it's just incredible. So to continue with that, we no longer do it in the refuge, <clears throat> excuse me, in the refuge now. Now we open it right out. So any, any child affect, affected by domestic abuse can come to us free of charge. And we say, come and enjoy, come and feel some release. We can't do anything about the the actual thing that they've been through but we can give a therapeutic effect mm. to help them release the the fears of trauma the feeling of trauma and it's a glorious part of my job so yeah that's that's the award oh. that we for for that because I love doing that and uh people say you should talk about this <laughs> yeah, I think it's amazing oh, I'm glad we've managed to get that on the podcast because anyone who's listening to this in the area um can come to you and get that you know bit of release from things because it is difficult and um I think performing arts kind of takes you to a different place doesn't it it takes you to a different world and it gives you that escapism which sometimes can massively help with mental health problems it really it really does um so from a drama perspective role play can really do that mm. and I've actually done work with the ladies in the refuge itself to help take them to another place and that's really helpful uh, in their minds. Um, voice, it's amazing when you sing. If you sing a song that really resonates with you, it, it's a really vulnerable thing to do. But actually, it can bring great soothe. And when you use your voice to release trauma, it it's like the, the air coming out of your lungs actually um, almost makes you feel more connected outside of your body to release the trauma. Mm. So that's voice and drama. And then dance a hundred percent you can throw yourself into music and escape because you have to concentrate on the movement so much you can't think about anything else mm. and it's just a glorious thing to be able to be able to do that it's uh 
it's an amazing therapeutic effect people say yeah you do therapy it's not therapy um that's a an actual labeled thing a, a thing that you have to be qualified for but for us it's therapeutic what we do mm. and you will feel amazing after empowered and nurtured yes yeah, yeah which is an incredible thing to be able to do for people so your rewards journey actually began with um wiltshire life yeah. Uh, awards so that was actually only last year wasn't it yeah. so why do you think it took so long for your business to be trading for awards to go on your radar do you know it never even it never even I never even thought about it you, you're so busy doing <laughs> doing the work mm. I never even thought about it it was the gorgeous wonder that is Fiona Scott who does oh Fiona yeah. one of our uh, sponsors yes oh, no, no, no. We know beautiful Fiona. human beautiful human yes. she's the one I go yeah but I'm just doing this and she's like Fee, don't you realize people need to know about this? I'm like, yeah, but I just keep doing it. They, they, do really, people want to know about this. Yeah, they really do want to know about this. So, um, she made me, she made me <laughs> go for a watch. <laughs> it's like, people need to know about this, people yeah. need to know about the work that you're doing. So, yeah, having Fiona Scott on my team has just uh, changed everything at Revolution. And it used to be quite frustrating that people didn't really, uh, when I've been going for so long, that people didn't, they were like, oh really what, what do you do and where are you yeah, and they live in Swindon and Swindon. I was like I've been doing this for all this time really but uh, since Fiona now people say to me you are everywhere you are everywhere but it's great sending you know sharing the message that it's important and that's that's important to me so just do you work with Fiona on your PR does she support you with yeah. that yeah. oh I see I didn't realize that Absolutely. so what wins have you had on the PR side then where she got you into oh my goodness um Oh, it's just not all the articles. We just mm. I have so many articles and my um uh yeah, my social media has been amazing. What was incredible was this time last year I helped out um uh in Swindon. We do the holiday activities and food programme. I don't know if you know that. Um and in Wiltshire, um sadly their main provider had had to pull out last minute so the young people who would normally get free activities and hot food in their summer holidays wouldn't have got it at all um so I jumped in I think I'll help I help where I can so I did uh, four settings to see if I could help and then blow me I picked up the phone <laughs> from Boynton's West and he said oh can we come and talk to you please I was like yeah okay thinking they just talked to me on the phone they said yes yeah, so we'll bring a camera and, we'll, and I was like oh 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 okay okay so we did <laughs> So I was on Points West. So that was amazing. Oh. Like, yeah, television. So yeah, that was um that, that was good. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Because was... a lot of families do struggle over that six week holiday period, don't they? I don't think people realise how difficult it can be if you're on a low income mm -hmm. and you're trying to maybe juggle a job or childcare or you know, you might be off sick from work. It can be really difficult, can't it? Absolutely. Um, so, um, like I said, you know, as a child, free school meals child, had my little silver disc and had to go and get my little hot meal at, you know, each lunchtime. And um, it's important to me that children have um, equal access to the arts as mm. well as hot food. So, um, yeah, is all that's always been really important to me. So as long as the programme has been running, we've been doing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, with thousands of, of children through the years, which has been amazing. And yeah, whenever there's been a campaign um, nationally about um, making sure children are fed, um, yeah, we're we're right up there. <laughs> so, so we sing, we dance, we do drama, and we do food. I mean, what's not to love? <laughs> oh no, it's amazing, and and I think having that recognition in Wiltshire as well with the award from Wiltshire Life, I think that's really lovely. And obviously, then you moved on to more national awards from there. Yeah. So. If someone's listening to this and they're a bit sort of like, oh, I don't know what to do with my life, what would your <laughs> advice be? What, for running their own business? Yeah. Um, if they oh. reach that crossroads and they're not quite sure what to take, really what steps to take. Oh, darling, you know, let's be, let's be very dramatic because I'm very good at that. Um, you know, <laughs> we all die alone. We all die alone. You mm. know, it's like, it's just you. So you have to do now what makes you happy mm. now. What do you love now? What makes you happy? Because life is so short. You know, COVID has taught us that. Um, life is so short. Do what makes you happy right now. Figure out how it how it's different to any anybody else. And if you have passion for something that you can create, it will always succeed. If you have passion behind it, if you love what you do, you won't be working. You'll be thriving and people will respond to you because you love what you do. 
people say to, have said to me people buy from uh, your face and from your personality and if they connect with you they'll want to buy you know the product that you're selling so yeah. that's so true mm -hmm. that is so true because no one wants to buy from a place that looks like this no. <laughs> and I was literally talking to a business owner a few weeks ago not on the podcast by the way this yeah. was at a networking meeting and she was doing her one minute ever so like this and it was all oh, like that. Yeah. And I thought to myself, you know, I was looking around the, the the virtual room of all these different people on this Zoom call and there were what I call like, you're, you're a tigger because you're yeah, very yeah, sick. Yeah. And then you've got the Winnie the Poohs and then you've got the Eeyores. Eeyores. Yeah. <laughs> and she was an eel and I just oh. thought it doesn't want to, I don't want to work with you. It doesn't engage me. I wouldn't recommend you. You've got to kind of bring... Bring some light back in. And if you can't bring that light back in, you're in the wrong business. Yeah. 100%. You need to go and do something else. hundred <laughs> percent. And I think as women, we um, are so quick uh, to hide our little light. Mm. You know, we dare almost put our head above the parapet. But that event that I met you at, the, the female entrepreneurship event was glorious because all the women were there for each other oh, it for was. each other and shining each other's light mm. it's glorious so yeah more of that find another woman who's running her own business and and yeah. uh, rub along with them and they will help you another woman will definitely help another yes because we had the great mary ryan speaking at that event didn't we oh, i mean well, a she was incredible uh she was at the forefront of developing the ventilator rollout in the pandemic an incredible woman and just listening to her I thought oh my goodness you know we I'm in a room full of such inspiring people it was just such a lovely feeling to be part of that event I loved every minute of it um yeah. let's finish off by talking about what's on the plans for revolution performing arts over the next year or so what are you doing what are you up to have you got a show coming up you can tell us about yeah 6th of july 6th of july is our, our big show yeah our big show and um it's called street lights and oh. what's what's really amazing is uh, oh people think swindon is like a cultural desert they call it they call it there's <laughs> nothing in swindon they are wrong they're so wrong um what's been glorious as i grew up there was amazing murals on the side of houses uh, as i was growing up they brought all that back the past couple of years and it's called um uh oh swindon art festival and um it's incredible so what we decided to do because it's i'm so passionate about it we took photographs with their permission uh, and we took photographs of all the uh, pieces of work that were on the side of buildings and we're using it as our backdrop and the young people are inspired by those pictures and they're creating their own work based on that. That's amazing Fiona, what a great idea. Thank so you. they're going to be mixed, you know, pieces of like singing and dancing yep. and all of that sort of, oh great, and when is this on in Swindon? 6th of July and um, we've arranged for the artists if we can the artists have come to meet the young people to talk oh. about the work as well so it's a lovely little circle there it's cool. so where can people get tickets on your website Revolution Performing Arts um, uh, if they go uh, yeah absolutely if they go to our website um, revolutionpa.co.uk all the information is on there to get tickets so well we'll make sure that's in the show notes there you go you are bringing life to Swindon <laughs> it's not the desert of no. no return with nothing going on that people think it is clearly no. No. you've brought light and love to Swindon that's amazing well it's been great to talk to you um you absolutely have so much enthusiasm for what you do you can't fail to be inspired by you you're an incredible entrepreneur so well done Thank and you. I wish you continued success with the business so well done thank you that's amazing Debbie thank you thank you